Good afternoon. I am Marla Newman, the chair of the National Low Income Housing Coalition Board of Directors. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the 39th annual NLIHC Housing Leadership Award celebration, honoring four exceptional affordable housing leaders, Representative Maxine Waters, Senator Sherrod Brown, Charlottesville Public Housing Association of Residents founder and former NLIHC board member, Joy Johnson, and the Housing Justice Network. A sincere thank you to our donors and sponsors, and especially to Wells Fargo for hosting the event again this year. The proceeds for this event go to supporting all of NLIHC's work to address homelessness and housing poverty in America. And of course, our work has never been more important. Over the past year, with the pandemic threatening the health and safety of people experiencing homelessness and low-income renters, a large proportion of whom are Black, Latino, and Native American people, NLIHC led the fight for safe, decent, accessible, and affordable homes for those most in need. The coalition is now leading the House campaign for long-term anti-racist policy solutions for universal, stable, affordable homes. It is my pleasure now to introduce Bill Daly, Vice Chairman of Public Affairs for our host sponsor, Wells Fargo. Bill has spent his career at the intersection of government and business. He served as Chief of Staff in the Obama administration, and Secretary of Commerce in the Clinton administration. And he is well known and respected for his experience as a banking executive at JP Morgan and BNY Mellon. He joined Wells Fargo in 2019 in his role of Vice Chairman of Public Affairs and leads the company's communications, government relations and public policy and social impact and sustainability organizations. Bill is a thought leader on leadership, business, the economy, and the current political environment. Bill? Hi, I'm Bill Daly, Vice Chairman of Public Affairs for Wells Fargo. And on behalf of my colleagues from Wells Fargo, we are proud to join you in celebrating great leaders for their work to advance housing solutions for underserved communities throughout our country. Leaders who we are proud to have worked with for many years. The past year has drawn attention to the critical need for affordable housing. The economic impacts of this pandemic have disproportionately affected low-income communities, especially those of color. We recognize that solutions to intransigent housing issues take time, so we're providing immediate relief to those who have a need. Throughout the pandemic, we have deferred payments and waived fees for 3.6 million consumer and small business customers. This includes helping our home lending customers who have been unable to make their home loan payments, most of whom are eligible for up to 12 to 18 months. When these customers are ready to resume payments, we're working with them on customized solutions to catch up on their loans. We've also paused foreclosure and eviction activity on our customers' occupied properties through June, and we support the CFPB actions regarding foreclosures, which they put out earlier this month. These solutions, combined with the efforts of housing counselors to reach more homeowners, provide essential assistance for customers who are facing pandemic-related hardships. And we stand ready to work with government agencies and organizations like NLIHC to ease those hardships where we can. At Wells Fargo, we are committed to fostering an inclusive recovery and building a better, more inclusive and sustainable future for all. Housing solutions are obviously an important part of this recovery. And so we are creating pathways to affordable, safe and quality homes which are focused in four key areas. First, we're working to increase housing stability. Our supportive housing counseling services, rental relief, and eviction preventive programs 
have helped keep more than 200,000 people housed over the past year. Second, we are increasing the supply of affordable homes. We have a long history as a leader in affordable home lending, as well as investing in home ownership and multifamily rental housing. For example, in 2020, we offered more than $1.2 billion in bonds that preserved and developed more than 10,000 homes in underserved communities of America. Third, we're expanding our home ownership opportunities, our network lift and other lift programs expand pathways to home ownership that help narrow the racial equity gap. These programs have helped more than 24,000 people with down payment assistance and home buyer education since 2012. Fourth, we're driving transformation and innovation in housing solutions. In 2020, we launched the Housing Affordability Breakthrough Challenge in partnership with nonprofit enterprise community partners. Late last year, we announced the first six winners who each received a $2 million grant to turn their concepts into real solutions. By supporting innovation in housing, we can help address injustice that has persisted for too long. All six of the winning innovations from the challenge address racial equity issues faced by tenants and homeowners. Another way that we're providing affordable housing is through flexible operating grants to support the great work of National Low Income Housing Coalition. Under the leadership of the CEO, Diane Yentel, the coalition has made a huge difference in communities across the country throughout the pandemic and beyond. Your advocacy, along with other stakeholders, has played a critical role in appropriating historic levels of rental assistance through recent federal COVID relief legislation. By working with the coalition and the leaders who are being recognized today, we at Wells Fargo are committed to ensuring Americans in need have safe and affordable homes. Safe and affordable housing is critical to building stable communities and enabling economic growth for all. I'd like to thank and congratulate Chairwoman Maxine Waters, Chairman Sherrod Brown, Housing Advocate Joy Johnson, and the Housing Justice Network for their tireless work to ensure Americans have a place to call home. Congratulations to all of you, and thank you for your unwavering commitment to affordable housing solutions and therefore making our country a better country. Thank you very much. Bill. Now for the presentations of NLIHC's Housing Leadership Awards. Our first honoree is recognized with the Edward Brooke Housing Leadership Award. The video, please. Edward Brooke Housing Leadership Award is named for the late senator from Massachusetts who championed low-income housing as a U.S. senator and as chair of the NLIHC Board of Directors after he left the Senate. The Brooke Award goes to an exemplary housing leader with a record of fighting for affordable housing on the national level. The National Low Income Housing Coalition is pleased to present Congresswoman Maxine Waters with a 2021 Brooke Award for being a tireless champion and an outspoken leader for low income people, affordable housing, and solutions to homelessness. Representative Waters has spent over 40 years as a dedicated public servant, including 15 terms in the U.S. House of Representatives for California's 43rd District. Before being elected to the U.S. House in 1990, Representative Waters served 14 years in the California State Assembly, where she championed bold, progressive policies that advanced racial and economic justice. As a U.S. Congresswoman during the economic crisis of 2008, she helped prevent innumerable families from losing their homes by leading efforts to stop foreclosures and secured $6 billion for the Neighborhood Stabilization Program. In 2012, the Congresswoman made history by becoming the first woman and first black chair of the House Financial Services Committee, a position she still holds. Chair Waters was instrumental in enacting the Home Forward Act of 2014, 
establishing the National Housing Trust Fund, the nation's first program in a generation dedicated to building and operating housing affordable to the lowest income people. Chair Waters' fierce, steadfast leadership has once again proven invaluable as our nation deals with the coronavirus pandemic. Her leadership was central to getting billions of dollars for HUD programs in the CARES Act in March 2020, and tens of billions of dollars more for housing and shelter for those most in need in recent coronavirus relief packages. Her leadership has kept families and children from experiencing homelessness, protected people at high risk for evictions, and saved countless lives. For her indispensable leadership fighting for equity and justice, combating racism, championing the housing needs of the lowest income people, and achieving critical housing and homelessness resources and protections during the pandemic, NLIC is honored to bestow the 2021 Edward W. Brooke Housing Leadership Award to Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Good afternoon. I'm Dora Leon Gallo, the CEO of Community of Friends, and I'm so thrilled to join all of you today to add my congratulations to Congresswoman Maxine Waters on receiving the National Low Income Housing Coalition's Edward Brooke Housing Leadership Award. All I can say is, it's about time. A Community of Friends, a nonprofit organization in Los Angeles that develops and operates permanent supportive housing for formerly homeless individuals and families affected by mental illness. We in Los Angeles are so grateful to have you as our representative, someone who's willing to fight for what is right and for what is needed. And in our communities, the need is great for affordable homes and attention to racial justice. One of our buildings, Figueroa Court Apartments, is located in the 43rd Congressional District. I remember the first time Congresswoman Waters came to our building more than 10 years ago to learn about our work and to engage in a conversation about solutions to end homelessness. You came with your team with no fanfare. It wasn't a photo op, but a no-nonsense working session that lasted well over an hour and a half. And yes, we were nervous. As those who work closely with the Congresswoman know, you came prepared, peppering me and my team with a slew of questions. 
but it was a great conversation. You've been a true champion fighting for equity and the critical resources needed to give people an opportunity for a stable and affordable home. From the NSP program to the National Housing Trust Fund to introducing the Ending Homelessness Act and the Housing Infrastructure Act, we are so lucky to have you represent and fight for us in the 43rd District and the country as a whole. Your staunch advocacy for people experiencing homelessness is the consistent and unwavering leadership we need no matter what else is going on in this country. It's been said that a leader takes people where they want to go. A great leader takes people where they don't necessarily want to go, but ought to. Thank you for being our champion and congratulations again on receiving this award. On behalf of the NLIHC board, staff and membership, it is my distinguished honor to congratulate Representative Maxine Waters for receiving NLIHC's 2021 Edward Brooke Housing Leadership Award. I now present the Honorable U.S. Representative from California, Maxine Waters. I am deeply honored to receive the National Low Income Housing Coalition's Edward W. Brooke Housing Leadership Award. I want you to know that I'm very appreciative of the work that the National Low Income Housing Coalition and its members do to advocate for affordable housing for our country's lowest income families. Your work has such an important impact and has been particularly critical during this pandemic crisis. You know, throughout my career, and as Chairwoman of the House Committee on Financial Services, I have made it a priority to address our nation's homelessness and affordable housing crisis. The very first hearing I convened as Chairwoman was on the need for Congress to take action to tackle the homelessness crisis. And I continue to work to advance my legislation the Ending Homelessness Act. I think about this all the time, and I see the devastating effects this crisis is having on our communities, as so many of our neighbors are forced to live in tents, on streets, and under highways, in cars, and other places not fit for human habitation. Of course, during this pandemic, Housing insecurity has only increased as millions of families across the country face eviction and homelessness during this crisis. I and my colleagues have worked around the clock to ensure a robust and effective congressional response to this crisis. Well, thankfully, under the leadership of President Biden, we were able to pass the American Rescue Plan Act, which includes critical housing assistance I worked to provide, including an additional $21.6 billion for emergency rental assistance, $5 billion for housing choice vouchers, and $5 billion for homeless assistance uh, that had not been anticipated prior to this act. But the passage of that bill is just one step. And we are aware that there is much more work to be done. The Biden administration has put forth a proposal for an infrastructure package, and I'm very pleased that they have followed my recommendation to include housing as part of infrastructure. Last Congress, I put forth the Housing Is Infrastructure Act, which makes key housing investments to support affordable housing for people with low incomes, including funding for public housing and the National Housing Trust Fund. And I look forward to advancing a robust and targeted infrastructure package that includes all of those investments. I will continue to work every single day to end homelessness and ensure housing affordability all across this nation. So I want to thank you again, again and again for this honor, and I look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, and congratulations again, Representative Waters. 
Our second honoree is likewise recognized with the Edward Brooke Housing Leadership Award. The video, please. Late. U.S. Senator Edward W. Brooke, Republican from Massachusetts, worked tirelessly across party lines to ensure low-income people in America had decent, accessible, affordable homes. He established the Brooke Rule, the standard for housing affordability in America, and led NLIC as its board chair after leaving the Senate. The National Low-Income Housing Coalition is pleased to present a 2021 Edward W. Brooke Housing Leadership Award honoring an exemplary housing leader with a record of fighting for affordable housing on the national level to Senator Sherrod Brown of Ohio. A lifelong Ohioan, Senator Brown, now the chair of the Senate Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs Committee, has spent his career fighting for working and low-income people, families and youth. In addition to his many contributions to working and low-income people, making the earned income tax credit permanent, establishing new consumer protections, creating the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and others, Senator Brown has been a strong leader on social and economic justice, voting rights, and affordable housing. Senator Brown joined civil rights legend Congressman John Lewis as co-chair of the congressional delegation to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the March for Voting Rights in Selma in 2015, has made the pilgrimage to Selma every year since, and continues to fight against barriers to voting. The Washington Post called his voter registration efforts probably the most intensive and wide-ranging in the nation. Senator Brown was instrumental in getting more than $12 billion for HUD programs in the CARES Act in March of 2020, including $4 billion for homelessness response and an eviction moratorium on all federally assisted homes. His leadership was key in the passage of a bipartisan compromise coronavirus relief package with $25 billion in emergency of rental assistance, an extension of the CDC eviction moratorium, and an extension on the use of CARES Act coronavirus relief funds until December 31st, 2021. And then in getting tens of billions more in the emergency rental assistance and homelessness resources in 2021. His work and leadership saved lives by protecting the housing stability of tens of millions of low income renters. For his many years of fighting for racial and social justice, voting rights and affordable housing, and for his exceptional leadership in Congress to address the housing and homelessness crisis during the coronavirus pandemic, NLIC is honored to bestow the 2021 Edward Brooke Housing Leadership Award to Senator Sherrod Brown.
Hi, I'm Bill Faith, and this is my wife, Barbara Poppy. And it's really, truly an honor for us to congratulate our own Senator Sherrod Brown on receiving this year's Edward Brook Housing Leadership Award. Barb? Congratulations, Senator Brown. I'm proud to be an Ohioan who is served by you in the U.S. Senate. You've been an extraordinary leader on housing across all of your career. I, I've had the privilege of working with you to better address homelessness, and I very much appreciate the passion you've so shown toward ensuring that no child, no veteran, no one is left behind and, and homeless because of your advocacy and your leadership. And I look forward to the new leadership you're bringing in the U.S. Senate today as we move closer and closer toward an end to homelessness for all Americans. Throughout our state, um, Senator Brown is known as a compassionate leader. He's known for his bold thinking. I, I've known him throughout much of his career. He's always been pushing the envelope when it comes to social justice across the board. And we are so excited as a true champion of housing. Uh, we are so pleased with his new role as the chairman of the Senate Banking and Housing Committee. Um, and he's proof that when you have um, true, authentic values, uh, progressive values, you could win elections, even in a tough state like Ohio, when you talk about real issues and you, you talk about the dignity of work, uh, no matter what your station in life is. So congratulate, uh, congratulations to Sherrod Brown. We look forward to working with you and thank you for all you've done and thank you you're all you're, you're going to do in your new role. On behalf of the NLIHC board, staff and membership, it is my great honor to recognize Senator Sherrod Brown with NLIHC's 2021 Edward Brooke Housing Leadership Award. I now present the Honorable U.S. Senator from Ohio, Sherrod Brown. I'm Sherrod Brown. It's an honor to serve the state of Ohio and to serve this country, the United States Senate. Thank you for giving the honor and privilege. Thanks to the National Low Income Housing Coalition for honoring me today. More importantly, thank you for your work on behalf of families all over this country, especially in this awfully challenging time of the pandemic. It's a it's a it's an honor to receive an award from you, but it's especially an honor to receive this award along Max alongside Maxine Waters, my committee counterpart in the House, my friend for now three decades, and and someone who I frankly I've patterned some of my career after because I've seen what she has done in housing for decades. I'm much more of a latecomer to that. I've only worked on housing uh, issues really for about half that time. At the beginning of the year, I took over as the chair of the, the, the Senate counterpart to Maxine's committee. Um, they, they just refer to it as the Senate Banking Committee, but the name is Senate Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs. So you will never hear me call, call it just the Banking Committee. You'll always hear me call it Housing and Banking or Banking and Housing or the full name um, because this committee has been far too much about Wall Street and not enough about Main Street and not enough about housing. Uh, those days ended in early February when I took over the chairmanship of this committee. Last month, we held the first hearing, get this, in nine years, nine years on the state of all housing in America. When we heard from Diane, and Diane Yentl and the work that she's done, we had to have her at our first hearing like that. We held another hearing this month on the legacy of race discrimination in, in housing from black codes to Jim Crow uh, to redlining, to the Trump administration locking in discriminatory housing practices. People's paychecks haven't kept up with the cost of living, particularly the cost of rent. You all know that even before the pandemic, one in four renters, I mean, you know this number, one in four renters across the country spent more than half their income on housing. One thing happened in their lives, one bad thing, their car broke down, their child got sick, they missed a, a few days of work because of an injury or an illness. Uh, their lives would turn uh, turn upside down, and, and most and most concerning of all, as you know, the 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 uh, black home ownership rate is as low as it was when housing discrimination was legal some 50 years ago. This is what housing families were facing a year ago, and this pandemic surely has made it worse. So thank you, 
for your advocacy helps in the way the American Rescue Plan will put shots in people's arms and kids back in school and people back at work and money in people's pockets. It contains $50 billion, 50 billion, that's 50 thousand million dollars in new emergency housing assistance for renters and homeowners and people experiencing homelessness 21 billion in the new plan for emergency rental assistance building on 25 billion we provide in the december covid relief plan the american rescue plan includes targeted help for those at risk of homelessness as critical as the plan is now it's just that it's a rescue to mobilize our resources to get through this emergency returning to the same broken system isn't good enough for hard work, frankly, wasn't paying off for too many, far too many workers. We have an opportunity in the Banking and Housing Committee to build a better housing policy, preserve and create more and better housing that families can afford to expand access to home ownership for brown and black Americans, to build generational wealth and cut down on, on um, wealth inequality. We're going to we're, we're going to work on a lot of this in the infrastructure bill because in spite of what some right wingers say, housing is infrastructure. President Biden recognizes that it's in his American jobs plan. The plan would produce, preserve and retrofit more than two million affordable homes. Uh, we know what that we know what that will mean to people. Um, it will call for it calls for policy for, for for investments that would help eliminate state and local exclusionary zoning laws and overcome inequities in our communities. I look forward to working with the president, with Secretary Fudge, who until two months ago was my congresswoman in Cleveland, to make these historic investments. I'll continue to consult with your leadership here at NLIHC. And thanks again, especially to Diane. Her testimony, as it always is, was excellent. Um, thank you to all of you, her and everyone else, for your continued advocacy. We're going to do, we're going to deliver real results for people in this country. Thanks for having me. Thank you, and congratulations again, Senator Brown. Now it's time for our third award, the Cushing Dolbear Lifetime Service Award. The video, please. Cushing Dolbear Lifetime Service Award, named after NLIHC's late founder, a pioneer of the affordable housing movement, goes to an individual who has demonstrated an unyielding commitment to achieving decent, accessible, affordable homes for low-income people over a long period of time. NLIC honors Joy Johnson with the 2021 Cushing Dobear Lifetime Service Award. Joy Amaryllis Johnson is the founder and board chair of the Public Housing Association of Residents, FAR, in Charlottesville, Virginia, established in 1998 as a citywide residence association for public housing and Section 8 residents. She is employed as a Section 3 coordinator for the Charlottesville Redevelopment and Housing Authority, CRHA. A native of Kingston, Jamaica, Joy became an American citizen in 2000 and is a public housing resident. Prior to CRHA, Joy served for 21 years as an outreach coordinator for the West Haven Nursing Clinic, helping neighbors access preventive health care from parish nurses and organizing the annual West Haven Community Day. At FAR, Joy puts the rights and needs of low-income residents front and center, giving residents powerful influence in the city's planning and policy decisions impacting their lives and the lives of others. Under Joy's leadership, FAR led a 2012 class action lawsuit against CRHA for excessive utility fees, formed crucial partnerships with local and national housing advocacy networks, produced the Positive Vision for Resident Directed Redevelopment publication to guide the work of the CRHA, and secured employment opportunities for low-income residents. Through its innovative six-month internship program, FAR provides the leadership and advocacy skills residents need to become change makers, go on to well-paying jobs, work as housing advocates, and serve on city boards and commissions. Joy has served on or chaired numerous boards and commissions, including the Head Start Policy Council, CRHA Board of Commissioners, UVA Employee Council, Virginia Association of Neighborhoods, Offender Aid and Restoration Board, West Haven Tenant Association, and many others. 
In the early 2000s, Joy served on the board of NLIC, bringing her phenomenal activist leadership to the work of the coalition. Joy is currently the vice president of the Board of Legal Aid Justice Center and serves on the local steering committee of the Equity Center at the UVA Housing Committee, the CRHA Redevelopment Committee, the UVA Billing and Collections Advisory Council, FARS Residents for Respectful Research Advisory Committee, and the Charlottesville Housing Advisory Committee. Joy also works with J.R. Fleming of the Chicago Anti-Eviction Campaign. Successfully completing numerous workshops and training with HUD, NLIC, and many others, Joy has shared her knowledge at workshops for NLIC and an array of other convenings and conferences. Joy is a lifelong member of Mount Zion First African Baptist Church. In her spare time, she enjoys gardening, dancing, spending time with friends, and most of all, spending time with her four children, Adrian, Jamie, Janae, and Eva, and six grandchildren, Ajayla, Adriana, Arlenia, Janaya, Kwamari, and Kingston. NLIT is honored to present the Cushing Bear Lifetime Service Award to Joy Johnson for being an example of how we must all live our lives in service of improving the lives of others. Hello, Joy Johnson, you housing justice warrior, you, you force of nature. I am so honored to be part of you receiving the Cushing Doe Bear Lifetime Achievement Award. And I know that Cushing would be thrilled that you are re being recognized in her name. During your nine year tenure on the National Low Income Housing Coalition Board of Directors, you were always fully present and supportive while holding us all accountable for how public housing residents are represented in the housing policy debate. You are savvy, funny, and never afraid to speak your mind. And I learned so much from you and I am grateful that you remain my friend to this day. As some of you know, I have been teaching part-time at the VCU School of Social Work since I retired from the coalition. Joy has been a guest speaker in my class every year first driving from Charlottesville to Richmond with Dave Norris to speak in person and now joining the class by Zoom. Joy is a huge hit with my students. She is authentic and full of stories that make advocacy come alive and she is so confident in her power to make change. Speaking of change, let me congratulate Joy and Far and the whole team that put together the deal 
to completely rehab and thus preserve Crescent Hall for the 105 seniors and people with disabilities who make Crescent Hall their home. I saw on Facebook that you recently broke ground on the, on the project. The trajectory of the Crescent Hall project is a case study in how a community can save a precious public housing resource. We are on the cusp of a new era in housing policy, one that rejects the 40-year effort to demonize and starve public housing. And we are at a time when advocates like you, Joy, who always believed that public housing was worth saving, will be victorious. Thank you, Joy, for embodying the goodness and persistence that Cushing taught us. You are her legacy. Joy, on behalf of the NLIHC board, staff and membership, it is my great honor and pleasure to congratulate you for receiving NLIHC's 2021 Cushing Dolbear Lifetime Service Award. I am pleased to invite Joy to share some words with us. Afternoon. It is an honor to be accepting the Cushing Niles de Beer Award. This award feels like a million dollars to me. It takes a village to raise a child. When I started out, I was that child. There are so many families, extended families and friends that make up my village. The name of my village is Affordable Housing, which includes public housing for extremely low people. I want to thank everyone who supported me, put up, lift up, drink up, stood up, dance up, travel across the country and spend time with me to learn and gain the knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals of housing and human rights. My journey started when I attended a resident meeting on the public housing site I recently moved to. The organization leader were mostly seniors and they asked me to read a statement at a housing authority meeting. One of our legal aid attorney advised us that they would strengthen numbers because whenever I spoke at the housing authority meeting, the commissioners were, would ask if I was speaking for myself or other residents. This is when I knew it would be important to have a citywide organization. I attended a gathering in DC with public housing residents from all over the country, sponsored by the Center for Community Change, Othello Pollard and Anne DeMond. We applied for a small grant to use with our funding to form a citywide organization, the Public Housing Association of Residents, FAR, and get our 501c3. Through the resident organizing campaign, I met so many residents from New York to Florida, from California to my home state. I also met some public housing OGs, including Kimmy Gray, Bertha Gibke, and Martha Johnson. At a HUD Trainer for Trainer conference, I was introduced to the National Low Income Coalition. I met Harry Lawson, who was organizing residents from across the country, and a resident seat became available on the NLIAC board. Fall applied, and I became a board member, where I met other residents such as Regina Morgan, Patty Campbell, and Talisa Downey. I served nine and a half years on the coalition board. It has been one of the best things that has happened to me. I've traveled across the country, sat in rooms I would never have the opportunity to sit in, dialogue with senators and representatives and attend HUD conferences. I also met with several HUD secretaries, demonstrate on HUD, negotiate with HUD secretary and staff, doing presentations at conferences with Willie J.R. Willie Flemings. But most of all, I was able to see what other states were doing and building a lasting relationship. One of those relationships was with Cushing Niles de Bear. The way she walks, the way she listened, the way she made sure that we were included, the way she show us how to negotiate, the way, she need, she, the way we need to influence, the grace she shows when she enter a room, the way she share her family with us, especially Louis the way she laid the foundation for us to be able to still fight and influence and carry on the work for affordable housing, the way she taught us to work coll collectively because of those attributes, it has been passed on to FAR, which is now working collectively with Chicago, FAR, CRHA, City of Charlottesville and Red Light Management we are working together to rehab our senior building and building 63 
new unit for our residents with no displacement. Thanks, Cushion. Thanks to my family for sharing me with the world, even though they could not understand why I was doing this for free. Thanks to the board and staff of the coalition. Special shout out to Sheila Crowley, Kyra Norris, Ed Gramlish, Darren Walker, Bill Faith, George Moses, Chuck Assessor, Annette Duke, Nancy Bernstein, Charles Gardner, Dave Norris, and a good friend of mine who have passed on, Holly Edwards and Karen Waters. Thank you. And congratulations again, Joy. Our fourth and final honoree is recognized with the Sheila Crowley Housing Justice Award. The video, please. Sheila Crowley Housing Justice Award, named for former NLIC president and CEO Sheila Crowley, who led the coalition for more than 17 years, goes to an individual or organization that has elevated the conversation around affordable housing for those most in need. NLIC honors the Housing Justice Network, HJN, with the 2021 Sheila Crowley Housing Justice Award. Established more than 40 years ago, HJN consists of frontline workers in the fight against the nation's housing crisis. Coordinated by the National Housing Law Project, HJN is a network of attorneys, advocates, and organizations throughout the U.S. that develops the field of housing law and collectively supports one another. Its members work with the local organizers to advocate for better state and local policies, represent clients in eviction courts, work to prevent foreclosures in partnership with housing counseling organizations, support survivors of domestic violence and victims of housing discrimination, and much more. During the COVID-19 pandemic, HJN members help their clients and advocates understand and respond to a wide array of state and local laws. HJN and NHLP held working group calls, conducted informative webinars, and developed legal briefs and policy documents on eviction relief and moratoriums, on public housing agencies' actions in response to the pandemic, and on ways to improve rental assistance programs. In many jurisdictions, HJN attorneys went to court and continue to do so as the pandemic raged on. Elsewhere, HJN members guided their courts on how to manage Zoom calls and protect basic rights of due process. Repeatedly, they had to educate judges about the law, including on the federal eviction moratoriums in places where judges and landlords claimed tenants had no protections. Despite the pandemic, the rights of black and brown communities, women and many others were under severe attack. HJN members continued their work to promote racial justice, fight for protections under the Violence Against Women Act, and defend decades of established civil rights law. It is because of the efforts of HJN that so many families have been able to stay in their homes throughout the pandemic. For the network's outstanding efforts for over 40 years serving on the front lines to advance housing rights and over past year to keep families safely housed during the pandemic, NLIHC is pleased to honor the Housing Justice Network with the 2021 Sheila Crowley Housing Justice Award.
congratulations to the National Housing Law Project and the Housing Justice Network for this well-deserved recognition of your extraordinary work. The network of attorneys that make up the Housing Justice Network are some of the smartest and most dedicated people I know, working tirelessly to keep the lowest income and most marginalized people safely and stably housed. That's always been true, but the network's extraordinary participants and the tremendous importance of their individual and collective work were made clearer than ever during the COVID-19 pandemic. All day, every day throughout 2020, these fierce and brilliant legal aid attorneys throughout the country fought successfully to keep people housed. Their work saved lives, and I am continuously grateful for and inspired by their commitment, dedication, and good work. So thank you to everyone at the National Housing Law Project and the Housing Justice Network, and congratulations on receiving this year's Sheila Crowley Housing Justice Award. On behalf of the NLIHC board, staff and membership, it is my great honor to recognize the Housing Justice Network with NLIHC's 2021 Sheila Crowley Housing Justice Award. I am pleased now to introduce Lisa DeSouza from Legal Services of Eastern Missouri and Hannah Adams from Southeast Louisiana Legal Services, who are accepting the award on behalf of HJN. Lisa and Hannah. My name is Hannah Adams. I am a staff attorney in the housing unit at Southeast Louisiana Legal Services, the civil legal aid agency serving the New Orleans region. My name is Lisa D'Souza. I'm a staff attorney who works on systemic advocacy at Legal Services of Eastern Missouri, the legal aid organization serving St. Louis City and 21 surrounding counties. We are honored to accept the Sheila Crowley Housing Justice Award on behalf of the Housing Justice Network. The Housing Justice Network is made up of frontline workers in the fight against the nation's housing crisis. Coordinated by the National Housing Law Project and established more than 40 years ago, HJN is a network of attorneys, advocates, and organizations from around the country. The network develops the field of housing law and supports one another. Its members represent their clients in eviction court, work with local organizers to advocate for better state and local policies, partner with housing counseling organizations to prevent foreclosure, support survivors of domestic violence and housing discrimination, and much, much more. Without a coordinated federal response to the housing crisis exacerbated by COVID-19, HJN's collective efforts made the best of a patchwork of federal, state, and local laws. HJN and the National Housing Law Project held over 100 calls and webinars, developed legal briefs and policy documents to delve deeply into eviction relief, how public housing authorities were dealing with the crisis, and how to improve rental assistance programs. Over and over again, HJN had to educate judges about the law, including the widely published CARES and CDC moratoria in places where judges and landlords claimed tenants had no protections. On a personal note, during the pandemic, the Housing Justice Network has been instrumental in my practice. With a lack of federal guidance and a new landscape of laws and rules governing evictions that seems to change daily, I have relied heavily on the ideas, expertise, and collaboration of my colleagues at HJN. Through the HJN network, we have worked with colleagues around the country to coordinate the response to the various federal lawsuits filed to enjoin the CDC uh, eviction order, which would be devastating to our clients. We collaborated on amicus briefs highlighting public health context and the experiences of our clients in the federal lawsuit filed by landlords in Western Louisiana. When I was briefing a state court appeal on the issue of whether the CDC protects from end of lease term evictions for no cause, I got invaluable advice and ideas from members of the HJN network. As we all know too well, eviction defense is hard, intellectually taxing and emotionally exhausting work. The pandemic has been an isolating time. As a relatively new attorney in my sixth year of practicing law, I am deeply grateful for the sense of community and mentorship I have gotten from being part of the HDN network during this challenging year. 
And as a lawyer who's been practicing for 25 years, I'm also deeply grateful for the HJN community and never more so than in this past year when our clients' needs were more dire than ever and we were scrambling to understand new laws and policies and develop advocacy strategies. As a generalist, it's so valuable to have this community of housing experts who are deeply and daily working on issues confronting tenants. In this past year, Legal Services of Eastern Missouri turned to HJN for model one pagers explaining the new tenant rights under federal legislation and the HJN community responded so we were able to quickly develop and distribute know your rights flyers and host virtual trainings for our community partners so that advocates across Missouri were able to ensure tenant rights were protected. I also learned from HJN members that other state financing agencies were issuing policy bulletins to their subsidized property owners, warning them against improper evictions and requiring them to post tenant rights flyers at their properties. We reached out to Missouri's housing finance agency who then took steps based on what other states were doing to ensure that Missouri tenants were protected. As Hannah said, HJN is an invaluable tool for housing advocates and we are honored to accept the Sheila Crowley Housing Justice Award on behalf of the Housing Justice Network and its members. Thank you and congratulations to the Housing Justice Network. It is now my pleasure to pass the baton to NLIHC President and CEO Diane Yentel for closing remarks. Diane. Thank you, Marla. Congratulations once again to these exceptional leaders, Representative Maxine Waters, Senator Sherrod Brown, Joy Johnson, and the Housing Justice Network. We are so inspired by you all and so grateful for your leadership. The work of leaders like these four honorees and of the National Income Housing Coalition and our partners around the country has never been more important as the COVID-19 pandemic has shown so dramatically the economic, health, racial, and housing inequities in this country. We are at a key moment in our nation's history when bold solutions to racial and housing injustice are within reach. Just as NLIHC and our members and partners have led the fight for an equitable housing and homelessness response to COVID-19, we will lead the charge for racially just universal, stable, affordable housing for the lowest income and most marginalized people in America. Please join us in this vital undertaking. This is truly a once in a lifetime opportunity we have ahead to end homelessness and housing poverty in our country. And finally, I would like to once again, thank all of the sponsors of this awards ceremony especially the event host, Wells Fargo, and other donors. With all of your support, the National Income Housing Coalition exceeded our fundraising goal for this event of over $500,000 raised. And if any of you watching now would like to text to give, that information is shown at the bottom of your screen and thank you in advance for your generosity. Your contributions not only celebrate our 2021 Housing Leader Award honorees, they support all of NLIHC's policy analysis and advocacy, our data-driven research, our organizing and mobilization, and our communications work to achieve socially just public policy that ensures that the lowest income people have decent, accessible, equitable, and affordable homes. Together we can and will end homelessness and housing poverty in America. Together we can achieve housing justice. What follows now are event sponsors. Please note that a full Housing Leadership Awards program can be accessed on NLIHC's website at nlihc.org. Thank you again and have a good evening. <laughs>